Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting because your book, The Briefing Politics, the Press and the President, it comes out tomorrow. It's about your time working in the White House as the President's first press secretary. Yeah. And uh, you said that you thought your, your first day was going to be your last. It was. I'm not sure if anyone saw it, uh, but uh, it was rather epic. I went out and I, you know, I, it's become the butt of a ton of jokes, and I thought I knew what the president wanted me to do, and I, I misread him. I, I thought I had a handle on the tone and the tenor and the words that he wanted me to use, and that was a day that if I could pick one day to do over everything, that would, that would be at the What would you have said differently? Well, I think more importantly, what I didn't do and, and what I talk about in the book is that I should have sat down with the president and said, this is how I want to handle this based on what you've told me to do. Is this right? I learned to do that, and I talk about it in the book, that I learned that he is very precise with how he wants things phrased, um, the tone and tenor of how to then, you know, subsequently how, how you say those words. Mm -hmm. And initially I assumed, okay, I got this. I had seen him on the campaign. We had interacted. We had done some other media interviews where I had watched him. I thought, okay, I, I have an idea of what he wants. Yes. What I learned more than anything, and I think it's a good principle going forward with any principle, is check with them. Make sure you understand that you've got your marching order straight. And I, I from day one, learned a very valuable lesson that unfortunately was very, very high profile at the same time, which was, I should have made sure that I knew what he wanted me to communicate and how he wanted it communicated. How important is the book to changing the perception uh, and the legacy that you have right now? Well, it depends on who you are. Um, you know, it walks through everything. How this kid from Rhode Island, from a non-political family, uh, got to stand at the podium of the White House. And it's a very unique journey. It's sort of my own American dream, if you will. Like, you know, I took photos outside the White House. I never thought I'd get a tour of it, never mind work in it. And I got a front row seat to history. But the campaign, the time at the RNC that I spent, um, the, the six years there and what we built as a party under Chairman Priebus, um, the, the campaign, the transition, the debates, the convention. I mean, there's stuff in this book that I think when you read it, you go, oh, my God, I forgot about that. And now here's the behind-the-scenes story of something, what was going on at the convention. List. So for me, it gave an opportunity to talk about that. And then obviously the first six months in the White House were very historic. But... It's and it, chaotic? Yeah, absolutely chaotic. I, so it was Michael Wolff's depiction of the White House accurate? Not not in in, many, in almost in a lot of cases it was unbelievably overblown. Uh, there was a lot of inconsistencies. It, it's not a chaotic place, but is I mean in the in the broader sense of walking in and you know you don't see people running down. It's not like television. Yeah. Um, but were there, was there a lot to get done? I mean, even the New York Times early on describes it as saying, you know, the pre you can't, no one can deny that the president's, uh, you know, hit the ground running and create, kept up a, a hectic pace. We were going 100 miles an hour, and yes. we didn't have a, a ton of folks put in key positions at the time. So, yeah, it was chaotic and hectic, but it was also we were getting things done. What's interesting is I don't think that there's enough perspective right now to really encapsulate what this presidency means. Right. It is all so odd and so unlike anything we've ever That's seen. Correct. But what's very helpful is having these first-hand accounts right. of, of people like you, Thank you. <laughs> that uh, you know will be able to put together. And, and it's interesting because people who have left the White House are very candid about the people there they don't like. Uh, Anthony Scaramucci hates John Kelly. Between Steve Bannon, John Kelly, and the Mooch, who do you like the least? Who are my choices? Uh, the Mooch. Okay. Steve Bannon. And John Kelly. Uh, I have tremendous respect for General Kelly and his service to this country. Uh, Steve is someone that I've gotten to know over the last couple of years. And he's a friend. I have nothing personal against Anthony, and I, I write about it in the book. I, I don't know him that well. Um, I didn't think he was a good fit for the job, um, but I don't know him, and I have no personal animus against him. I, I don't think I do for many people. That's not really the way I live my life. But I think the one thing that is somewhat unique to your point is that I'm the only one so far that was part of the campaign that was part of the transition, that was part of that first six months of the White House, and can kind of show you that entire arc, what Did it was like. Do you think Paul Manafort was a scumbag? Um, I didn't know Paul well. I think what I've come to know of him, there's clearly a lot of shadiness to him. Mm -hmm. um, but Paul, look, we were going into a convention with a bunch of never-Trumpers. There was a movement afoot to potentially try to put other people in nomination, and which would have never resulted in anything but a delay in the inevitability of Donald Trump as our candidate. Um, and Paul had been doing conventions and counting delegates since the 70s with Ford and Dole and uh, Reagan. And, and for what he did at the time, um, he was probably the most qualified person for that task. Um, but... I, I obviously did not did know. Did anyone it. raise red flags about? No, we were going a million miles an oh hour, gosh. and it was. Basically I still like, can't believe the lack of vetting 
on that campaign for some of the people who weren't. Well, and again, it's, it's also, I mean, like I said, you're going 100 miles an hour. You don't have a ton of people. Remember, the campaign, and I write about this in the book, at that time was was, you know, frankly, understaffed. Yes. And so the idea that you because, sit back... Is, is it because everyone assumed that he wasn't going to win? I think, no, no, not at all. I think it's because the this this campaign was uniquely driven by the candidate. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, this was not, I, I talk about it in, in this one sense, this will give you the one example that I think is most poignant. In the past, if a candidate for president was going to like Toledo, Ohio, they would take out radio ads and send emails to like all of their supporters. Hey, I'm going to be in Toledo in three Saturdays from now. Please come, bring a friend. Da -da -da. Trump would tweet. Yes. Be like, I will be in Toledo in a week. And people would just start lining 70, up. 70,000 people. Right. There. And it was crazy. And that's the, it was so unbelievably unconventional and unhistoric in the, in the process model structure standpoint. So the campaign structure mirrored the candidate, which was it didn't follow the normal norms. And, and you can read more about this and the unique relationship. And you still have a lot of respect for the president. Absolutely. And, and you speak of him glowingly, but it, it certainly was Look, a chaotic time. And you're very honest. I, I, and, and, if, if people want to know more and piece this presidency together, uh, your book is a great place to start. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was, this was an unbelievable honor for me to serve our country and to serve this president. Oh, I thought you were going to say being on the show. That, I was getting to it. That, and second <laughs> in my list is <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> Just so, ahead of the papal blessing of your rosary. Oh, yeah. So third. Third is Kennedy. <laughs> okay, wait. Hold on. Wed wedding and kids. So eighth, Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dropping like a hot potato. All right. Um, thank you so much. Thanks Dr. for having Reichner. me. Congratulations Appreciate on the book. Thank you very much. Very good.